Hi, and welcome to Math with Bill. My name is Bill, and in this video we're going to look at the derivative of a trig function, and specifically it's the cosine function. This one we're going to use a limit derivative uh, to demonstrate what's going on here. So the cosine function, uh, to do a limit derivative, we're going to take the limit as the change in theta, which is usually the angle uh, that we work with, with trigon trigonometry. So the limit of theta, theta as it approaches zero of the quantity cosine of at, uh, theta plus delta theta minus cosine theta all divided by delta theta. Okay. So what we need to do first is expand out this sum of angles for cosine. And our sum of angles formula there with cosine is cosine of the first, cosine of the second, minus sine of the first, and sine of the second. So this is this piece expanded, and then I just copy out the rest. So divided minus cosine theta, and again all of this is divided by the change in theta. At this point we want to look at our three terms in the numerator and decide which two have a common term. Okay, and the common term here exists with our cosines. And so I'm going to gather those together so that I can easily factor. I'm going to have cosine of theta, cosine delta theta, minus cosine theta, minus sine theta, sine delta theta, all divided by the change in theta. Okay, that's great. Um, if you have any trouble here, uh, you can always change your subtractions to adding the opposites and then mix them around that way. This is what you end up with. I'm going to factor. What I end up with is cosine of theta times cosine delta theta minus 1 divided by delta theta minus sine theta times sine delta theta all divided by delta theta. Now, if you watched the derivative of sine, you're going to notice some things that are really, really similar. Specifically, if I break this off, because this is a multiplication, so I can create two separate fractions here, of cosine theta over 1, then I have this cosine delta theta minus 1 divided by delta theta. And we're going to do the same thing over here with sine. And now I've got sine theta and sine delta theta divided by delta theta. So those are the same two limits that we're going to need to evaluate here as delta theta goes to zero. Again, there's a separate video that you should watch that explains why our limit of this quantity approaches zero, and why the quantity sine of delta theta divided by delta theta approaches one. But watch that video, these are those limits. Okay, so what we end up with is cosine theta times zero, or nothing, minus sine theta times one, or the opposites, or uh, yeah, opposites of sine theta. So, dd theta of cosine theta is equal to, so the derivative with respect to theta of cosine theta is the opposites of sine theta. Okay? If you remember from the previous video, we did ddx of sine x is equal to cosine, so the derivative of sine is always cosine. Well, the derivative of cosine is just slightly different. It's negative sine of x. Thanks, and watch the other videos.